When someone saw me with this this morning, a box of matches, they asked if I was going to turn, burn the church building down, and I quickly clarified that was not the case. And then someone else observed, well, you're going to light the church on fire, though, right? And I said, well, something like that, something like that. And actually, I meant to hit a slide, and Gary looks busy, so I'm going to do my first slide. There we go. You know, I'll just have to do all the work myself this morning. I keep going, don't I? We'll see how long the mic works. I should have been trying to do this while I was making those comments because I realized I needed a new matchbox. But you light one match in a dark room and you get some light, all right? Not for long. This wasn't supposed to be a comedy act. You'll just have to use your imagination in the screen, okay? It's still up there. You get some light and the darker the room, the more that one match, that one light illuminates the rest of the room. Now, I'm not going to do this, but then if you add a few more matches to that or maybe several candles, you get the idea, well, then, then you get some real, you begin to get some real light. The room really lights up in a very literal way. That's the idea this morning as we think together about being involved about participating together in the Lord's work in general. But our focus this morning is on the local work of the church here at Second and Adams as we work together for our Lord, serving our Lord, serving each other, serving our community. Your unique talents, your resources, your presence, all of that, it is not simply that, well, you're, you're involved and you're doing something. It is more like that you're adding your match to the light. That what you provide, what you bring, helps to produce a light that lights up this family here and in a dark world. The light is Jesus. That we're able to reflect or, in a sense, take His light and shine in our own way as we participate together in the Lord's work. So a couple of thoughts this morning. I know I'm being, uh, I didn't mean to be, you know, again, I didn't mean to come up here as, as a stand-up comedy guy. I did say not long ago that there's not much difference between a preacher and a, and a stand-up comedian. It's just that when the preacher stands up, people don't usually laugh, although there are rare exceptions. But I'm being a bit pithy this morning, but maybe to help us remember these two thoughts, that every member is important. If you want to add a word, you could say a couple of words there, is important. But think with me about every member. What, is, what happens when every member is participating? Not simply showing up, but participating in the work of our Savior through His church. And then we'll consider for just a brief moment, some energy matters. Or even you could take that as a, as a statement itself, that energy matters matters, even when it comes to a light or a match. Let's think together about every member this morning, every member. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book we call, or the letter we call Romans. Romans chapter 12 is where we're going to be in just a moment. I'll go ahead and hit that so you can see the reference there. But first, T-D-I. And of course, you're wondering, what does that stand for? And if you've got the handout, you're, you're welcome to put out beside. Here's my acronym. Now, I looked this up because I thought, that sounds, I think there's something in the, the vehicle world. And so this is not, I'm going to tell you what it is not first. It is not, for the, the car people in the room, it is not a turbocharged direct injection engine. Not that kind of TDI. It's also not the Texas Department of, of insurance. That's also an acronym out there, TDI. I'm using TDI this morning to say total disciple involvement. Total disciple. And if you're in Jesus this morning, you might go back and think about the commission in Matthew 28 or a number of, of times when people who have repented of their sins and been baptized into Jesus then are identified with that term, disciple. Someone who now is following and learning and growing in the footsteps 
of their Savior, their Lord, Jesus. That's the goal this morning, and that's our emphasis this morning, is that goal of total disciple involvement. Let's read about it together from Romans chapter 12. We're actually going to begin at verse 1 and read a few verses through verse 8 of Romans chapter 12 together. Romans 12 begins this way. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship or service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And then I submit to you this morning that what follows is a key part of this self-sacrifice where I'm giving my whole self to my new master, Jesus. And that puts me in a, a group of people who are in that same situation. We called them disciples earlier, brothers and sisters. Even that term is used here. Let's read verse 3 now, 3 through 8. How every member is important because there's one body that belongs to Jesus, but many members make up that one body. And they each have their role, they each have their portion to contribute to the work, their sacrifice, if you will. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body... We have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Let's add to that statement, every member is important, every member matters, and we see that right here in this passage, but we also see it's not just the general truth. We sometimes say everybody is important, every person even Every human being has value, and that's true. Every person in the church has value. Each of us is important. But here, we're being reminded it's because of who we belong to. That we're one body, and many members make up that body. We share a common faith in Jesus. And that is really why everybody is important, because we all share in this body. And that also, he says, makes us... We're members of one another in the sense that we all belong to the same. And so then he mentioned some specific gifts. Now, some of these for this setting were miraculous. Some of these, not so much. And we might think today of talents and abilities. Sometimes we have, sometimes we need to develop and, and then use. So the principle is that every member matters. And then maybe the question becomes, what is, what is it that you have to be a part of this body to give as your part of, as a part of your sacrifice. He says, Having then gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, most of this is pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? If you've got an ability to do something, well, there's a good start. If you're asking, what can I do? What's available? We're going to come to that later. But if you're asking, what can I do? Well, think about, where, where's my strengths? Where are my weaknesses? What can I contribute? He says, if you have it, use it, is the basic idea. The one who exhorts in his exhortation. The one who contributes. And here, financially, seems to be the focus in generosity then. The one who leads with zeal. The one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness one body many members each having their own gifts and abilities they bring to the work of jesus people because of this we are to work we are to minister and grow together another passage to consider we're, we're not going to be able to read this one this morning together but i encourage you to look at ephesians 4 as well and even hold it alongside or up beside Romans 12. In Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, 
he begins with some specific roles, like teachers and pastors or overseers, shepherds, and then they equip the whole body for service or ministry. And if you keep reading that paragraph, it ends by the idea of the body of Jesus, the people of Jesus, like a body, growing and functioning. And he says every member of that body doing its part to grow together into Jesus. We're growing to be like Jesus the, within this idea, the head of the body. He's the king. We follow him as his disciples. I've even had some recent conversations with some here about this mindset, about as members of the church, having a mindset that is more consumerism or a consumeristic mindset or a contributing mindset. Ask yourself this morning, when it comes to the Lord's church, what am I? Am I more a a consumer? I'm here just to to get something? Or am am I a contributor? a spectator to come and see, or a participant to be involved in the work of the church. That doesn't mean, even as we saw in Romans 12, that everybody's going to be a song leader, or everybody's going to be a Bible class teacher, but it does mean that every member has their role in this work. Every member. As I reflected on this, I thought about the London Fire in the 1600s, 1650s. It was known as St. Paul's Cathedral, and it burned as a part of the London Fire. And as they began to reconstruct this cathedral, the architect assigned, one day he went around and he asked different workers, what are you doing? And someone someone said, "I'm, I'm placing these bricks right here as a part of this wall. Someone else mentioned how they were putting together this ornate fixture. And he came to one person and they said, I am helping to build this building to the glory of God. Now discussions about St. Paul's Cathedral and and the context aside, what if that's how I saw my work? Not if if I came up to you this morning and you're the song leaders, I said, what are you doing? that if you just said, I'm leading singing, that's a problem. It's not really about what you say as much as about how you view what you do. What if we viewed it as every member is contributing to the work of God, to His glory? Every member. But then, secondly this morning, energy matters. So how's your energy level this morning? It's become a somewhat trite thing, hasn't it, that... You see some kids playing and running and jumping and all of that, and, and you look and you go, man, what happened? Why don't, why don't I have that energy now? And why don't we get that energy when you're, you're 70 or something and you've got a little more wisdom and maturity when you're seven, you might not have so much of the latter. Maybe there's something to learn from the, the excitement about life from our children and our grandchildren. We tap into some of that, not so much physically, but but emotionally, mentally, spiritually, that we could bring that to the table of the Lord's work, to be, to, to borrow from earlier, to be on fire, to have zeal. Go back to Romans chapter 12. And verses 9 through 13 that we didn't read there, the next paragraph, he's already described leading with zeal or with a fiery passion. Then he says, here's some specific other things you can do. You can love, you can share, you can rejoice together. And it's in verse 11 when he describes serving the Lord with zeal. And that's that word for passion, for having a fire that's lit under you, where you look to the fact that I'm serving the Lord. That's that's the secret, if there is one, It's that perspective that this is my Lord. I'm serving Him. And I'm serving one another. And I'm being encouraged. I'm encouraging you. What if I had zeal like that? Could I be like Timothy? And once more, this may involve for Timothy some some miraculous abilities in his his day. But in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 6 and 7, we read where Timothy was told to fan the flame 
of his gift. It might be that I'm, I'm kind of like that match earlier, that I, I've, I've, I was on fire at one time, I became a Christian, but then, perhaps slowly, it's dwindled. And I need to be encouraged to build that back up. That the Lord hasn't given me a spirit of, of being timid and afraid, but of courage, of love, self-control. So that I'm willing to step outside the proverbial comfort zone this morning. Someone once said that that's, the, that's all of life. That if you're ever really going to grow and learn in life, anytime you learn or grow, you have to be willing to step somewhere that you're not comfortable stepping. You have to be willing to, in that way, find the passion here in the Lord to serve Him with energy because that energy matters in how the service of the Lord continues, and in how we encourage one another, it tends to spread. So could we this morning, as we think about being part of this body, could we think together about spreading the fire? I'm not going to try it again because I tried and failed, but you could, you could light one match, and the way you, you add to that light is by simply bringing another match to the flame. It spreads, doesn't it? What if I'm one match this morning and I can spread the passion and the service of the Lord to someone else, moving beyond mere attendance? It's unfortunate that in this, in this nation we've created a culture of Christianity where it's all about attendance. As long as you're there, as long as you sit in the pew and maybe put some money in when it comes around, then you go on your merry way and you've done your service as a Christian. What if our concept of Christianity moved beyond attendance? Because we're not living simply in the world. As Christians, we are to live in the shadow of His cross. That's what it means, isn't it? When we've come and and been immersed in that watery grave and raised with Him, and then now we are to live in the shadow of His cross together. We can help you do that this morning. Come as we stand and sing together.